With four preseason games down and only one to go, the Raptors organization is about to face an impossible decision with their roster. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you the three players the Raptors need to cut before the regular season begins because these guys are just not good enough to make the final roster. Let's get into it. What's going on NBA and Raptors fans, it's Jacob here back with Amateur Art Sports for another Toronto Raptors YouTube video. On this channel, I bring you the greatest coverage and analysis on the latest Toronto Raptors news and videos and content just like this. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you can help us on a road to now 13,000 subscribers because we hit 12,000 last week. Thank you so much for the great support on this channel. And by the way, guys, if you find yourself enjoying this video along the way, be sure to drop a like on the video to show that extra bit of support. We want to hit a goal of 200 likes on today's video. I know that we can do it. But our video today is about the Raptors and the roster cuts the impossible decisions they need to make before the start of the regular season. Every year we get to this point, it's an unfortunate point in the offseason where we do have to cut three players from the training camp roster because if you don't know you're allowed to have 15 players on your nba roster plus you're allowed to have two players on two-way contracts meaning they can go back and forth from the g league and the nba no problem and three guys of that 20 therefore needs to be cut and sometimes there are some good players that get cut that you really don't typically want to get c cut but the reality is good players have to get cut because they're just not in the top 17 of the roster and that is what we're going to try to figure out in today's video as well we've seen some great performances from some of these bench guys vying to make one of those last roster spots and we've also seen some poor performances from some of these guys who are trying to get into those final roster spots so what we're going to do in today's video i'm going to go in order from the easiest player to cut all the way to the most difficult player to cut and we're going to see which three players i believe the raptors need to cut because they're just not good enough to make the final roster above any of these other players on the team so 20th guy easiest player to cut in my opinion now this is actually a little bit more difficult than I was initially perceiving it to be so the Raptors had a big decision to make even with this one because Gabe Brown initially signed on an exhibit 10 contract for the Raptors which means it's essentially an incentive to sign with your team to play in the G League but you get a little bit more money it's just more incentive for a good G League player to actually sign for your team so Gabe Brown Knowing that coming into the team, maybe he had an outside shot of making the roster in some capacity, but he knew that this was essentially a G League sort of deal. But Gabe Brown has actually been pretty damn impressive in preseason in the maybe the limited minutes that he has gotten. He's actually looked pretty good, especially in that Boston Celtics games. And what limited stuff we've seen of him, I think, I don't necessarily think he should be on the final roster, but I think he has shown a lot more than what two-way player Ron Harper Jr. has shown for this team. Ron Harper Jr., right after the entry draft this year, signed on a two-way contract, and Gabe Brown was signed to that Exhibit 10, as I mentioned. So both of them, it seems, are going to be involved with the G League this season, but Gabe Brown has been far more deserving, in my opinion, of that two-way contract than Ron Harper Jr. Gabe Brown is the only current player on the roster who was eligible for that two-way contract, but the only issue that I would have here, I'm very confident in saying I would rather have Gabe Brown on that two-way contract instead of Ron Harper Jr. The only issue with that, you'd have to cut Ron Harper Jr. in order to make that happen, and therefore you wouldn't have his G League rights as you do at the moment. So right now, in the current circumstances, if you kept it, Gabe Brown in the Exhibit 10, you cut him from the roster, therefore he goes to the G League. If you keep it under these circumstances, you get both Gabe Brown and Ron Harper Jr. in the G League, Ron Harper on that two-way if you were to provide Gabe Brown with what he deserves, in my opinion, in that two-way slot, take him instead of Ron Harper Jr., then you would not have Ron Harper Jr. in the G League, but you would still have Gabe Brown in the G League, also with the ability to come up and play in the NBA on that two-way contract. So it's a very difficult decision for the Raptors to make. Ultimately, I feel like Gabe Brown should be rewarded for his good performances. So in my opinion, 20th guy, easiest one to cut, would be Ron Harper Jr. Gabe Brown gets that two-way contract, but I can see that going both ways. This is just what I would do if I was in the position of the Raptors here. Now, the second player that we need to discuss in order to get cut, you know what? This is actually the easiest player to get cut. He's probably the 19th guy on the roster here, 
and that is DJ Wilson. DJ Wilson was a fun player last year. I mean, the Raptors signed him on a few 10-day contracts where he was actually like decently impressive in some spots where the Raptors had really horrific bench performances. DJ Wilson was providing us like, okay, this is a switchable guy, maybe some shades of being able to space the floor, can score at the rim maybe a little bit here or there. But the reality is DJ Wilson is not a bad player. There's just 17 other guys that I would prefer to have on this roster instead of him. I mean, yeah, neat and tidy player, but after getting drafted 17th overall five or six years ago now, DJ Wilson has just not come around to this NBA career very well. He's just not showcasing a ton of talent. And personally, looking at the guy, there just isn't a ton of upside within this player. Other players I'm looking at, like there can be some developmental strides taken. I really can't see any reality where 26-year-old now, DJ Wilson really climbs into any other level. This is not a player that's going to be getting a ton of minutes. Any player that's on like like the end of the roster here isn't going to be getting really any NBA minutes. I would like a player that I'm more comfortable in playing, and I think there are some I'm more comfortable in playing, and I also would like to maybe even prioritize a player that I think the Raps could work with over this season to improve and see if he can get to the next level this season. I just can't really see that with DJ Wilson. And, you know, that's not through a ton of fault of his own from preseason. I actually think he's looked pretty good in preseason. But I went into this preseason thinking that DJ Wilson needs to be one of the three players who gets cut from this roster. And he had to play his way out of that position. Even though he's been all right, he hasn't gone above and beyond to play himself out of that position. In my opinion, my perception of him being one of the bottom three guys on the roster. This is a good transition into the third player because this is the most difficult player the Raptors have to make a decision with. And I think there are two players here that the Raptors are deciding between. And that is Josh Jackson, new player on this team, and Justin Champagny coming back for potentially his second season. Now, Josh Jackson to preface, and this is why I had the comparison to DJ Wilson. I went into preseason thinking DJ Wilson should get cut and he needs to play himself out of that position. Josh Jackson is another player, I believe, who I thought going into preseason should have been cut by the Raptors at the end of preseason. He would have to play his way out of that. Well, from what I saw in the Utah Jazz game and from what I saw in the Boston Celtics game in preseason, Josh Jackson has done a very good job of playing him out of that perception, for me, of being cut. Now, a big problem with this, that is between Josh Jackson and Justin Champagny, and I have a lot of faith in Justin Champagny, and I think he's a good player. I'm going to elaborate on that in just a second here. The problem is, Justin Champagny has not been able to fight for this spot because he has been injured. He got very, very limited minutes last game against the Chicago Bulls, where in those limited minutes, he also didn't look very good. I mean, it was only six minutes, but like that's all we've got of Justin Champagne so far in the offseason. Like he was even injured for summer league. Like we just don't know what we're gonna get from this player right now. I have a lot of faith in him. Again, I'm gonna elaborate on that. But Josh Jackson is there showcasing talent. Justin Champagne is unfortunately, has unfortunately not been able to showcase that talent. Another player I think should have been in this consideration, I do not think is going to be in this, is Juancho Hernan Gomez. When we sign this player. I seem to catch a little bit of heat for saying this is somebody I perceive to probably struggle to make the final roster. In fact, I said when we signed him, I just don't think this is a guy that's actually going to make the final roster. That all changed very quickly when it was revealed that Juan Hernan Gomez has not only signed for the Raptors, he had signed on a guaranteed contract worth $2.3 million. Now, the Raptors have some dead cap tied up in Sweeney Hailuk who was owed $1.8 million by the Raptors, but they decided to waive him. And I think that was a pretty good decision. I don't think they want to have any more money tied up in players who are getting paid to play somewhere else by waiving Juancho Hernan Gomez now. And the reality for Hernan Gomez, I get he's Bo Cruz, and I get he was great at the FIBA Eurobasket. I perceived going into preseason that a lot of you were overrating him, I think, because of his role in Hustle with Adam Sandler, where he played... Bo Cruz. I think people overrated him as a result of that movie because Wancho has never made a statement anywhere he's played in the NBA, barring like a 14-game sample size with the Minnesota Timberwolves earlier on in his career. But he just he's on that guaranteed contract. And even in preseason, he has not really impressed me in any way whatsoever. I was hoping he'd come in, you know, he'd be knocking down shots consistently. I'd be okay. I understand we have this guy, he's a taller guy, maybe a little bit switchable on defense, can hit threes, but this is just giving me Yuta Watanabe vibes, somebody who we cannot 
reliably put on the court to hit threes. But again, he's on a guaranteed contract, and I think that completely eliminates him from this discussion. Now, Justin Champagny is a player who is just on the brink of getting cut, and he knows it. But what I see in Justin Champagne, and I made a video about this on my second channel, Amateur TV, which you should go check out with the link in the description. Actually got a good amount of views there for the second channel, but Justin Champagne is 21 years old and even had a role in the first half of the season last year with the Raptors getting consistent rotation minutes. Now, what he does really well, he knows his role. He's a big energy guy. He rebounds the ball really well for his size at about six foot six, can play multiple positions, defends above his height and he can knock down three-pointers. The three-pointers, that was showcased very well in the second half of the season where he spent a large amount of time in the G League. Now, he was playing there with Delano Banton, Justin Champagne, Delano Banton. Oh my goodness, watching those guys in the G League. I had Raptors 9 of 5 season tickets. Watching them in the G League, they were astonishingly good. They were so much better than the competition in the G League. Now, Delano Banton, I believe, and I've said this many times, that the way he played in the G League was not a game style that would translate very well to the NBA. He pretty much picks up his dribble early, maneuvers his way to the basket, uses his length and his size and athleticism to get to the rim, and he scores a lot. And he was better than everybody, so it worked really well there. In the NBA, the defenders are better. That's not something he can always do, but he has worked to improve on that. We're not talking about Banton. Justin Champagne, the way he was playing, catch-and-shoot threat from the outside, creating his own shot off the dribble, getting to the rim, slashing, rebounding. All of these traits he was showcasing in the G League are traits that I think would translate really well to the NBA. And at only 21 years old, I think there is a considerable amount of potential for this guy to at some point be a very, very serviceable rotation player for this team. Problem is, we haven't seen anything this summer because he has been injured. At 21 years old, I have faith in this player, and I have a considerable amount of faith in this player, as I mentioned. Josh Jackson, like I said, and going back to him, he has really done a lot to play himself out of this position where he's going to get cut from the team because he played really well in those first two preseason games. The problem, he was atrocious against the Bulls, and he was atrocious against the Houston Rockets. So two games in a row now where he has just not been good. I think that this is really going to come down to tomorrow's finale of preseason against the Boston Celtics in Montreal. If Josh Jackson balls out and shows out, he might make this final roster spot, but the decision could already be made. Last season, the final preseason game for the Raptors was against the Washington Wizards, where Sam Decker absolutely destroyed the Wizards in the second half, but then got cut about a week later. So it could be all for nothing, but in my opinion, Justin Champagne is currently just around the same level of a player as Josh Jackson is, but he's four years younger and in my opinion has a ton of upside. I don't want to hear the excuses that Josh Jackson was a fourth overall pick in 2017, which he was, and that he's got that fourth overall pick potential still within him. He has never in his NBA career showcased that he has the ability to get anywhere near that sort of level. Justin Champagne is showing signs of somebody who can develop the third player, therefore, that I would cut is Josh Jackson. So to recap, the three players that I would cut from this team, number one, Ron Harper Jr., though I could see it easily being Gabe Brown. That's not that big a deal because Gabe Brown's going to be playing in the G League regardless, but would you give him that two-way spot? That is a question. My pick, Ron Harper Jr. Second guy, easy don't think about it. DJ Wilson, the third guy, difficult decision, but I'm going to stick to my guns and say Josh Jackson should be the third player to get cut from the Raptors roster. Let me know in the comments if you agree. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. And if you enjoyed this video, drop a like to support. If you enjoyed it a lot and you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to Amateur Sports. Would really appreciate it. Let's go on the road to 13,000 subs and I'll see you next time for another video.